So with our history of intelligence and what it means out of the way, that finally gets us to our idea of artificial intelligence. And what does it mean for something to be artificially intelligent? Okay, well, what your textbook kind of does is it breaks it down into four separate categories. Thinking humanly, thinking rationally, think acting humanly, and acting rationally. And each one of these has their own sort of little uh, pieces in them. Uh, thinking humanly, for example, looks at the entire idea of, quite literally, how do humans think? What is it that made me decide what to eat today or what type of shirt that I, I, I pick out uh, for recording YouTube lectures, each one of these little things. Uh, how am I thinking about that? Well, you know, again, we have a number of different categories, uh, something like introspection, you know, again, thinking about uh, the mistakes I've made. This is take like number four or five, uh, rationalizing what went wrong or, you know, what I should have changed, uh, and processing those different things. And in fact, that's actually where experimentation comes in. Again, this is my like fourth or fifth take. And so maybe, you know, that first time didn't quite work or the energy levels weren't quite there. And so this time around, I'm changing things up. And so we're seeing if, you know, those work out or quite more, uh, you know, broadly, you know, if I go to a new restaurant, I'm trying out the cuisine. Uh, I've never had, uh, uh, kangaroo meat, but I'd be inclined to try it and experiment and see what it was like. Uh, again, uh, one more interesting kind of thing that we are doing in the world these days is something known as the fMRI scans, which again are now thinking about how humans think, but on a very, very realistic level. We have neurons firing in our brain and, you know, sending electrical signals. Well, we can put a cap on our head and, you know, map out which parts of our brain are activating when I show you the color red or pink or blue. And in fact, again, you know, is that how humans think? Is just neurons firing? Some people don't like that idea. Uh, but again, that's actually where we get into this idea of cognitive science. What we're doing is we're looking at cognitive psychology and AI to see if we can have theories on how the human mind operates. Here's a good example of, you know, a, a theory of how the human mind operates. When we think about memory in humans, it's broken down into two sort of categories or two spaces. Long-term memory and working memory working memory. And so if I gave you, say, for example, 5 times 13, try and do that math for just a second. Okay, well, you know, as you're doing that, you're actually processing things in what we consider working memory. As you work through that problem and whatnot, you're again kind of focusing on sort of uh, evaluating and assessing and making the evaluations to figure out that that is what 65 65 uh, but then we also have again long-term memory and so one of the current theories about long-term memory is again that's where all of our information our, our, our first uh, kiss our ability to ride a bicycle words that's where all that's stored and the theory about it is that it is infinite in capacity. Well, is that true or not? It's the working theory. It's currently what we think our brain is like. Again, I'm able to know how to ride a bicycle even though I haven't been on one in years. Or I am able to comprehend and remember my sixth birthday uh, and waking up thinking I was Spider-Man. So Again, how far does my memory go? And when I forget where my car keys are, it's not that I've completely forgotten. It, it's that the processing time to remember and pull that stuff out of long-term memory is just longer. Okay, again, that's just one of the four different categories that, again, our textbook is using to sort of evaluate what it means to be artificially intelligent. And in fact, that's actually where we start getting into our next category and where the good old Turing test sort of sits. This idea of instead of thinking like a human, what if you just 
you take your agent, your entity, and just make it behave like a human. Is that enough to be a human? And so a good example of this would be, uh, let's say, for example, I'm sitting down and I have a, a, a chat window open up to uh, someone known as Alan, and I ask Alan a simple question. Hey, can I ask you something? To which Alan responds, sure, what's up? I ask, are you a robot? Alan says, what? No, LOL. I, I don't know if the kids these days still use LOL, uh, but whatever. My entire point is, again, is Alan an, uh, an artificially intelligent agent or a human? And if I don't know the difference between that based on sort of my uh, responses with Alan, are they succeeding? Are they artificially intelligent because they are acting humanly? And in fact, just to kind of show a little bit uh, behind the curtain of what all the different things going on in this kind of world are, is this actually breaks down into a number of different topics. NLP or natural language processing is what's actually, you know, going on to process, you know, this statement right here, uh, deduce all the different little questions, specifically when I ask if Alan is a robot versus if Alan is a cat versus Alan is a human, Again, being able to deduce what I'm asking. And in fact, that's actually where knowledge representation comes into play. What is a robot versus what is a human? And again, you know, I'm not trying to uh, have any wild, crazy uh, conversations about this. I'm just sort of, again, needing to be able to understand the difference between robot and human. That's knowledge representation. And again, we've got different little categories going on here, like the reasoning behind that and being able to make deductions based on what was being asked. Uh, and then finally, you know, the, the good old big $5 word that everyone loves, machine learning and training a model that is uh, capable of responding in such a way, like chat GPT. But again, we're only now at category two, acting humanly. And so that actually brings us into the idea of thinking rationally, category three. And this actually, you know, boils down into uh, a good old fashioned five dollar or five five dollar word uh, logic. And the entire idea is, well, maybe what it means to be intelligent is, again, being able to uh, produce correct conclusions from correct premises. You know, let's say, for example, I gave you a, a simple little kind of uh, logic problem. Uh, let's say that Adam is a student. Uh, you know, I'm a lifelong student, uh, a lifelong learner. So, okay, I'm a, a student. You know, something I know about students, I, I've been around the block a little bit. I've seen a few of you. Students are lazy. Oh, you might notice over here on the, uh, the right, we're using something known as first order logic. Notice the deflection when I called you all lazy. No, the entire idea is we can represent these things. There is some entity out there such that it has the concept of being a student. And then we're starting to create rules of what it means to be a student. So, for example, for all x, we're saying that if x is a student, that would imply that x is also lazy. Now, once again, what's the definition of being lazy? We haven't really defined that quite yet, but given these two statements, Adam is a student, students are lazy, could you make a rationalization? And in fact, again, that's where, you know, sort of logic problems come into play. Based on the information that I was given, based on the premises I was given, I can draw conclusions from those premises. For example, I'm lazy. Not I'm, someone named Adam. If your name is Adam, stop watching YouTube. However, there is some, you know, kind of key points and as we get to them later on in the semester that we will talk about. Major idea of, well, again, what does it mean to be a student? And having and making sure that you are, again, giving the correct definition of these types of things or you know, building relationships that actually work. Uh, so that's gonna be some stuff we'll talk about a little later on, but 
The last one, or uh, another good example of this, would be Betty's brain. This is much more realistic kind of perspective, but Betty's brain is uh, used to uh, teach students uh, biology through, again, thinking rationally. But if you were to ask, say, Betty, uh, because this is a, uh, what is this? Learning by teaching is the theory that they're working off of here. If you asked Betty uh, if algae in, uh, increased in amount, uh, quantity, uh, what would happen to waste? Okay, well, you know, again, there's this giant uh, uh, graph out here in the background. And so again, what we're asking or ho try hopefully trying to teach Betty is, okay, well, you know, if algae increases, we also know that the relationship uh, between algae and macroinvertebrates is that uh, macroinvertebrates eat algae. And so if they eat a lot more algae, because there's more algae to eat, they're, in theory, going to produce more waste. And so again, that's the idea here, uh, is getting Betty to think rationally based on the different relationships and how they interact with each other. But the last thing we will talk about, category four, is this idea of acting rationally. And as you can sort of see from here, this is where we are going to spend the bulk of our course. Because again, intro to AI and things like thinking humanly, I mean, that's hard to do. Acting humanly, that's hard to do. And thinking rationally, we'll, we'll dance in that world a little bit. But the big idea is, uh, again, when we think about the concept of acting rationally, again, you're thinking and then specifically you make decisions that will hopefully achieve the best outcome. So a good example of this would be, let's say that we have a self-driving car, right? Again, slap a, a thing on there, self-driving cars are slowly going to take over the world and as I get older, I will be a... a, a fervently uh, against them because that's what old people do uh, as they reject technology, whatever. But again, self-driving car, moving around, having a good old ball, and then a human shows up. What should happen? Not that. No. Heavens no. And you better appreciate those animations because that's the, that's the extent you're getting in this class. Uh, again, no, that's not uh, an intelligent agent acting rationally. If a human got in the way, we are not saying, you know, try and get a high score in GTA here. But we're actually thinking that a rational agent would stop, would see the human just driving along. And then when that human appears, oh, hey, you need to be stopping. And again, that's that idea of thinking rationally. And so it's through the combination. Again, we will be looking at thinking and acting rationally in this course, uh, specifically in that idea of, you know, planning and problem solving and doing searching. Uh, but again, we'll be exploring those different types of things throughout this course. So again, welcome. <laughs>